Hey guys and welcome to My Gaming Journal, where we examine video games in the format of a daily journal. For this episode, we examine Ghost of Tsushima and see how long it took for me to beat it. Spoiler warning for those who've not played the game, please enjoy. Dear Journal, the game starts off with a bang. You're about to charge into battle going against the Mongolian army led by Kotun Khan. You play as Lord Jin Sakai, leader of Clan Sakai, nephew to Lord Shimura. As explosives are going off, you are charging on your horse and then you go unconscious. And then you wake up and then you go unconscious again. And then you are presumed dead until Yuna brings you back to life. A thief who is wanting to save her brother who is currently held captive. But before she can save her brother, she agrees to help Jin rescue his uncle who has been captured by Kotun Khan. Spoiler warning, it does not go well. And the game officially starts. Act 1. The main plot in the beginning is you have to rescue your uncle. In order to do so, you need a crew, and here's where they come in. As we mentioned before, you have Yuna. Then there's also Sensei Ishikawa, a samurai archer who is currently on the lookout for his student who is killing innocent people. Then there's Lady Masako Adachi, currently wanting revenge for the person who killed her family. Then there's Kenji, the comic relief. And then there's Ryuzo, the leader of the Straw Hats, but we'll get to him later. When you're not focused on the main plot, you are helping their missions. A lot of their missions have the same type of rhythm. You get a lead on where you need to go, you think you've reached it, and then you get a plot twist that they're not there, but instead some other goon. As far as the combat goes, it starts off pretty tricky to master in the beginning, but once you get the hang of it, it is actually pretty fun, especially the standoff function where if you go into enemy territory you can just press a button and draw your sword for a quick draw slash it goes without saying too the graphics are absolutely amazing especially the greenery the grass the flowers the woods look astonishing and this is also some of the best camera work in a video game that i've seen in a long time in terms of the cutscenes. As far as gameplay goes, on the other hand, that's where it gets a bit tricky considering that the camera doesn't like to follow you when you're in the middle of a fight. So if you have a wall right behind you, you might not see what's in front of you. Back to the plot, you find Yuna's brother who is currently held captive and after rescuing him, he becomes your blacksmith. And now you have your whole crew, though you are currently waiting for Ryuzo to show up. The other thing I do want to mention about this game is that this game feels like a hodgepodge of several other games out there. Not just the obvious ones like Sekiro, for example, but even like games like Uncharted or Arkham City or even The Last of Us. This game feels like a lot of other games just mixed into one. And of course, obviously, a lot of inspiration went to the Kurosawa movies. Now that we have our whole crew, we are about to launch an attack on Castle Kaneda to rescue Lord Shimura. Unfortunately, Ryuzo decides to show up and instead joins the enemy wanting to claim a bounty that is on my head from the Mongol army. It took about six tries, but I did finally beat him. We finally rescued Lord Shimura and, of course, reclaimed the castle. Unfortunately, Kotun Khan had left and already claimed Lord Shimura's castle up north. So now it moves on to Act 2. A lot of Act 2 is just simply rinse and repeat in terms of the missions and the story. You're just trying to get towards... The finish line you're just trying to get closer to kotun khan you're trying to get closer to your allies goals 
though you do learn more about your allies and their tragic backgrounds. And on top of it, you add a new ally to your team named Norio. He is a monk who has lost his brother and wants to be just as good as he was. After gaining more troops from defending Yarikawa, you learn a new technique called the Ghost Stance. Ghost Stance, or as I like to call, EVERYONE MUST DIE, is a mode where everything turns black and white and you can basically kill enemies in one hit. Unless they are a boss fight, in which case you basically get three free hits. This is where his nickname, The Ghost, really kicks in. This is where he also meets up with an old caretaker named Yuriko who teaches him how to use poison darts, which Lord Shimura finds out and is not pleased because Lord Shimura's character is all about honor. And unfortunately, after teaching you how to use poison darts, she ultimately dies from an illness in one of the most heartwarming moments in the game. And now I've reached the midpoint of the game. This is where I'll stop for right now. Dear Journal, the enemy now has a new device that allows them to shoot explosive arrows all at once called a Hawacha. And despite the lack of swearing and nudity in this game, this game definitely earns its mature rating, not just because of the obvious violence, but also from the imagery you see in the game, specifically the burnt bodies of slaves who are spiked. And just like the first act of the game, you learn more about your allies, including Lady Masako's affair with a female servant, Yuna and Taka's past as abused slaves, and that Sensei Ishikawa initially tried to kill Tomoe beforehand. We also find out that the person who ordered the hit on Lady Masako's family was her own sister, Lady Hana. But before we find her, we have to go back to the main plot. As we are about to prepare our attack on Castle Shimura, Jin hears that Ryuzo is planning on flanking them. So he and Taka then decide to try and, and flank Ryuzo first. Of course, it ends up being a trap, and in the process, Taka dies. Jin is a prisoner until Yuna saves him, though she finds out shortly her brother is dead. Once you return, the Shogun army has agreed to help Lord Shimura in his cause. We are off to the castle. It's just like the first siege, only this time you find out that Lord Shimura wants to charge into battle, which would ultimately sacrifice many of his troops. While Jin has a separate ulterior motive, he instead wants to go in there by himself and poison the enemy's food and water supply. Jin does this even though he knows his uncle will disapprove and succeeds. He also succeeds in killing Ryuzo in the process, though Khan has already moved further north. Once he returns to Lord Shimura, Lord Shimura gives him an ultimatum to stop being the ghost or he will become a prisoner. To which Jin says, I am not your son. I am the ghost. Fast forward, Kenji rescues Jin from prison. Jin meets up with Yuna up north, though his horse dies in the process. And we are now into the snowy terrain of Act 3. Before you can do the final mission, your job is to finish all the allies' tales. Lady Masako finally meets up with her sister and her sister kills herself, and now Lady Masako needs to try and move on with her life. Sensei Ishikawa decides to let Tomoe live when she intends to leave for Kyoto to start a new life, and Norio finds out that his brother was alive the whole time, though had been tortured and had to give him a mercy killing, and decided to get revenge on, on the people who tortured his brother, and then it's final mission time, where you and your friends gather around one last time to take on Kotun Khan. In one of the best parts of the game, you finally kill Khan in a huge spectacle fashion and get your revenge with the help of Lord Shimura's army as well. Afterwards, you send out a message to your uncle wanting to 
hopefully make up. The two of you end up meeting at the Sakai Cemetery. He has an ulterior motive, though, as it turns out that he intends to kill Jin by the orders of the Shogun army. It took me about 11 tries total, but I finally did defeat Lord Shimura. After that, you are given a choice to either kill him honorably or to let him live. I felt that it was necessary to let him live as you are the ghost and that you have no honor. After that, we cut to credits, though you can continue playing the game if you want, but for me, I was done. Overall, the graphics were amazing, especially the greenery and the costumes. Really fun gameplay that was a bit frustrating at first, but after a few hours, you got used to it. The sieges were a huge spectacle, while the boss fights, the story, the music done a great job at honoring the Kurosawa estate. Even though at times some of the missions do feel a bit repetitive and could have shaved a few hours off for the sake of proper pacing, definitely check out this game, especially since it's an original IP as well. And for that, we are giving this game an 84%. Now, tune in next time where we examine Paper Mario and the Origami King. See you then. Thank you.